Uh, we'll start off with uh, Dave Manouk. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks, Jen. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, how are you? Good yourself. Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, just on the, the idea of being back, you know, the season's, you know, tentatively booked to start on February 5th. How are you dealing with, you know, there's still some uncertainty. You know, we don't even know what the All-Canadian Division is going to look like and you don't have a schedule yet. So how does that uncertainty impact your planning for your schedule? Well, it's it um, it changes quite a bit. I've never been so, I, I don't want to say last minute, but we're changing by every day is, is, uh, is we have some new information. Um, the whole concept of the taxi squad, who's going to go up, who's going to go down, uh, it changes everything. So today we had our first day. And like I was telling the players, we have 11 skaters, 10 skaters, two goalie. It's not a typical training camp. But so this is what we're going to try to do. And that's what we're going to try to achieve. We're going to control the controllables. And we're going to try to do um, to insert components of our system in every practices. We're going to have battles. We're going to have pace. And we're going to work on execution uh, with and without the puck. And then once we have a full team, we can attach all of those components together. But for now, it's uh, we're, we're trying to adjust. And then that's... Uh, that's the American League, and that's uh, that, that's uh, that's a league where you need to adapt consistently. You need to adjust yourself, and and, um, and and we can control only what we can control. So the plan that having a plan like we usually do before training camp, knowing what how many players you're going to have, a number of days, and having the schedule planned out, we don't have any of that right now. So we're we're adjusting day by day. You know, and for you, I guess for you personally, what does it mean to be back on the ice? I mean, obviously you helped the Jets in the bubble, but this is your team and now you're getting a chance to, to work with these young players and some of the older players, obviously, but getting an opportunity to be back on the ice. So what does that mean for you personally? Well, it's exciting for sure. And there's uh, we have uh, a bunch of guys that I don't really know about. So I, today I had a first chance to see some of those guys. We, we know about their stats and we have a profile on every single players, but for, for to see those guys on the ice and, and to how they skate, their mechanics. Obviously, like today, we're aware of um, some of those guys haven't touched the ice in a while. Some guys didn't uh, skate since December. So we need to be uh, to understand that part. But it's, it's exciting for sure to be back on the ice and, and to be working with the guys and, the, and to, 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 uh, to see them um, Working at their crafts, it's um, it's a real good feeling. We'll go next to Jacob Stoller. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Pascal. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about Cole Perfetti. Um, obviously, he had a very strong junior season last year, a uh, strong World Junior Tournament, and normally uh, he wouldn't be able to play in the AHL at this time. But uh, how much of an opportunity do you think the AHL could forge for him in his development at this point in time? I think this is great for him. Uh, he's... Uh, He's understanding or he's, he's learning about the language that we use and, and the components of our systems. He's understanding the kind of practices we're going to run. Um, he's exposed to pro players like he had some battles today against uh, against bigger guys. I think it's it's huge for him. Um, of course, practicing doesn't replace uh, playing games and, and in, in the Best case scenario, he's playing junior and he's playing a lot of minutes and he's being put in a position to succeed and, and under pressure. And that's 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 a great way to develop as well. But I think what we're doing right now is the second best uh, scenario. And, and for him to be exposed to um, our language and, and the way we, we do things here, the way we run our team and, and to be uh, practicing and and battling against um, bigger and stronger players. I think he's, it's a real good understanding of what it's going to take down the line and in the future to uh, become a Jet player. Uh, just one more. Usually someone draft eligible like him could get a stint uh, after his junior season. Um, do you mind just speaking about the differences in getting to, you know, develop the player before he possibly goes back to junior as opposed to after and how he could uh, benefit from that? Well, yeah. So it, I think every every team has a, a different uh, kind of system, and and we we work uh, we do a lot of even at training camp and and even at uh, 
with the Jets, uh, being part of the team for, for a while and even in the bubble, there's a lot of component teaching, like just picking up pucks along the boards and then working uh, uh, the boards one-on-one, -on -one, how to protect that, that puck in the offensive zone. Um, how do we want, how we want our players to attack the net and then and the net drive and, and, and the mechanics and, and the components of those, uh, um, those plays that we insert into our system. So for him, I think the development to be here will give him um, um, some kind of a jump start for, for the following years. Obviously, we're trying to adjust and, and we're excited to work with him. Uh, and we'll see how it's going to go. But I think what he's gaining right now is going to be really helpful for his training next year, knowing what kind of training camp we're, we're running. As I think one of the things that the players uh, usually realize when they first um, come to the Jets or the moves is the conditioning is uh, you, can, you, you think you're in good shape, but there's, uh, there's the NHL and or pro hockey conditioning, which is that at a different level. So just that part for him to understand and to see players around him, how hard they can push and, and strong they can be on the ice. That's, um, that's a big piece of becoming a good pro. We'll go next to Kelly Moore. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Jen. Hey, Pascal. Uh, if you can talk a little bit more about the taxi squad, because uh, you made reference to that, but uh, it is certainly a new wrinkle that, that is going to affect your lineup. Would you be talking to Paul even more so than you already were on, you know, who uh, should be there? And, and, and uh, have you developed any philosophies on who you would like to see with the taxi squad as opposed to who you have uh, playing for the Moose? Uh, no, I'm not going to speak more to uh, Paul or Chevy or, or any of the, the management about that. This is uh, they're running the Jets and then we're, we're taking care of the players that we have. Um, it, it's a bit tricky because the taxi squad is, uh, in my opinion, it's it's a real good. Um, it's a group of player that you you have and can bring on the road. So if you have any injuries, you can insert them into your lineup. So. Uh, in my opinion, you bring the best players available because those guys, we've seen it last night with uh, Gus and, and the night before with Veselin. And if those guys are going to play games at the NHL level, that's, 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 that's great. So it's, it's all about the NHL is all about winning. And, and the, the reason of our existence at the American League level is to prepare those guys so they're ready when they're being called upon. Um, so the taxi squad, it's, um, it's, it's all jets and, and we'll take care of the players that we have here. And when you eventually get a schedule and, and know how many times you'll be playing each team, which I assume will be a lot, uh, how much will discipline be at the forefront of getting prepared for the season? Because uh, as we've even seen in the North division, it doesn't take much to, to get things heated up. Yes, it, uh, yeah, it, it should, um, and that's great, right? I think, I think when you you look at development, um, and one of the reason why making the playoffs is so important for us is we have a different uh, evaluation on the players, and I think the season is going to be looking like um, small playoff series. You're going to play a lot of games against the, the same team, and. Um, and, and maybe playing four games in a row against the same team, which would look like a playoff series. And, and that's going to be some, somewhat our, our approach here, uh, trying to win those uh, smart series within the season. Um, I, I think it's going to be intense. I think it's going to be, there's going to be some rivalries. It's going to be emotionally intense and, and that's what we want. So obviously, um, the component of staying disciplined, but bringing your your emotional uh, level as high as you can you can do be and, and staying disciplined uh, is is something that comes with maturity and, and that's going to be a great, good moment to evaluate and, and help our players uh, bring that 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 intensity high uh, but staying in control. We'll go next to Patrick Williams. Go ahead, Patrick. Sure. Uh, thanks for doing this, uh, Pascal. Uh, I, I just first question is. Speaking with some players around the league, uh, some of them have expressed some concern about testing, sanitizing. 
um, that sort of thing. Uh, how would you handle your, handle your players going through what is such a, a new experience for everybody? We had um, over an hour um, Zoom meeting with all, all the players uh, um, Saturday. And um, we explained the protocols and that's going to be priority number one. We're going to spend a lot of time reminding them what needs to be done. We, we have um, hard rules that, that we're going to follow as a coaching staff. And it starts with the management, with the coaches. Um, and, and that's it. That, there, there's no other way. And, and we're not going to be flexible there. It's either you do it or, or if you don't, then you're, you're not going to stay around the team. So uh, there's, there's some teaching to be done and the reinforcement, and, but we're not going to be flexible. It's, uh, we're going to do it the proper way. Okay, we have time for just a few more. So we'll go to Ted Wyman. Go ahead, Ted. Thanks, Jen. Uh, good to see you again, Pascal. Um, the, uh, the, the question I wanted to ask you about was um, Logan Stanley. What are your thoughts on what he's been able to do so far uh, with the Jets? I like the way he's playing. Um, we could tell at training camp he was stronger and faster. Um, obviously, for defensemen, it takes a little bit more time most of the time. I think most defensemen will peak at the age of 26, 27, 28. Uh, for Logan, there was a lot of expectations, still are. Um, there is lots of expectations for him. Uh, but I think he's responding really well. I see composure in his games. Um, he's making uh, good plays with the puck. And then people don't know how good he can be with the puck. It's not... Uh, he can make those little plays. He can make those hard passes on the tape, keeping the game simple. He has a presence. He's using his, his sticks, his stick properly. For some players, and I truly believe that, for some players, it's in some weird ways, it's easier to play in the NHL. It's uh, obviously way faster, uh, but the, the, the players are where they should be on the ice. There's less confusion on the ice. for So for players like Logan, having the options always being available for him uh, when he touches the puck um, makes the game a little bit easier. And it might not be the right way, but it's, uh, it makes sense in his, in his uh, reads when he's on the ice. Um, I think he's doing well. And, you know, I want, I want, I want to, I want to congratulate him because this summer he did something different, um, but a big body like him, I think the thing, the thing that he's improved a lot is getting used to his big body and, and adjusting his positioning. And there's different ways uh, to play the game and different ways to get the puck back, for example. And, and he's using his size and his body to do it right. Um, he's, got, um, he's got Charlie Huddy to talk to uh, when he's got some questions. The coaching staff is really strong with the Jets. Eric Dubois did an amazing job with him over the years. But I think now he feels confident um to that he can play at that level and that's a big piece for a defenseman that confidence is there and then i think he's playing uh he's playing the proper way and i think he's playing well and one last quick one uh pascal uh has eric dubois been walking on cloud nine the last couple of days well for sure they're excited um they're excited because um you know he's also a dad and and uh, him and his wife they're really excited to have their son um, in town and playing for the Jets. And that's, uh, we're excited to have him too. Next, we'll go to Joey Slattery. Go ahead, Joey. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mute my mic. Thanks for doing this. Uh, sorry, Pascal, I got on this a little late. You might've answered this, but I just want to know what your first impression was uh, seeing Cole Perfetti on the ice today. And what his biggest adjustment will be like from an on ice perspective, not so much in terms of getting used to, I heard you talking about is, you know, getting used to the language of pro hockey, but what will be the biggest adjustment on the ice in order for him to be effective at this level, excuse me, at this level? Yes. Time and space and, and, and um, time and space is not as, um, is different. Uh, there's, there's none. And so you have to create your own finding ways to uh, read the open space to get open so he's not going to play the same way as um, Adam Lowry, for example. He's uh, he's a smaller player, and I watch the the games at the World Juniors, the way he moves on the ice, and his ability to change directions. He's obviously 
somebody that studies the game. He's, um, he can read plays, his reads are quick, and he's got real good hands. And he's quite agile on the ice, so he's not going to use his body because he's, he's only, he's playing as an 18-year-old this year, so he's not going to use his body. He's not going to be as strong as some other players, and, but, but that's okay. There's different ways to, to play the game and still be successful. So I've seen a kid that is, um, or a, a young man that is uh, listening and he's trying to do what we've asked of him. So we had the training camp <clears throat> with the Jets and, and, uh, and in between the Jets and the Moose, we had uh, some practices with five or six guys every day and he was on the ice and we could tell every day he's getting better. He's asking questions and he's able to execute pretty quick what we're asking out of him. So it's, it's a good sign. I think, I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to be a guy that will be able to create offense at this level pretty quick. Uh, but he will need some support five on five to understand the routes and, and what we were asking of him. We, uh, we also have in mind to develop him as a center, but also as a wing. So he has the different options and patience will have to be patient because it's just a, it's a matter of time for him getting stronger, getting bigger. Uh, he's still so very young, um, but you can tell he's really smart and he, he, he's got good skills, not only with his sense, but with his feet. Uh, he's, he's quite agile around the puck and, and, and his ability to separate himself from, from a defender is pretty impressive. We'll finish it off with Mike Sawatsky. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, Pascal. Just a couple of quick things. I missed part of your answer on uh, Perfetti. Uh, when the OHL starts up, does he go back there immediately or what happens with that? I, the honest truth is I don't know the answer of that. Okay. Um, how about the, the Vancouver loaned players? I don't see them on the training camp roster yet. Uh, when do they show up and, and how does that affect uh, Cole Kaler perhaps? Um, I, I don't know yet the answer to that. Um, whoever we're going to get, we're going to treat them like moose players. And that's, that's the plan. Uh, but who and when, and um, I, I'm not sure exactly. We're st still trying to figure out the schedule. As soon as we have more, we'll, we'll let you know.